If you're more comfortable using Excel rather than Visio, or if the data that you want to create a diagram from already exists in Excel, then potentially you can use it to automatically create the diagram in Visio. Now you might say to me, well, how or why might my data already exist in Excel? But what I'm meaning here is that when you extract data from other systems, very commonly that data can be imported into Excel. And from there, it might only need a few tweaks to make it suitable for generating a diagram in Visio. We're going to try out two examples in this video, starting off with an organization chart. And if you look at this Excel spreadsheet here, you can imagine that this data might exist in all manner of other systems in your organization. I happen to have brought it into Excel, so you can see I've got the employee name and there might be other employee information such as their ID. But more critically for creating an organization chart, I've got who that employee reports to. So you can see that Susan Lee is our managing director and then these people here, they report to Susan Lee and uh, these people here report to AJ. So the structure is already there, just waiting to be plotted into a diagram in Visio. So let me go back to Visio and from the new screen, I'm going to create a new organization chart. As ever, you might have to scroll down to find that. It's only at the top for me because I've used it recently. And what you'll see as we've come to learn, there are a few starter diagrams, but this one that kind of looks like a blank organization chart is actually the organization chart wizard. And that's going to be very helpful for us to connect to that Excel spreadsheet. So let me create a new diagram based on that wizard. And I've got two options, either using information that's already stored in a file or database. Yes, that sounds promising. Or I could enter it as I go along. But obviously, you've just seen the separate file. So that's what we're going to choose. And this is where I pick up where that information is stored. So I can pick up other data sources as well. But we know that mine is already in an Excel file. So that's what I shall choose. Of course, you then have to go and browse and find that file. And you already know that I've got it in the supplemental files for you. So let's just grab it from there. There we go. HR information. I'm going to click next again. And this is where it's trying to match up the name of the employee with the name of the manager. So in my data, yes, the name of the employee is matched up with employee name. So you can see the different fields there. So it's already successfully matched that up, but it can't work out. Well, you know, what's the manager's name? It's probably looking for a field called manager, but I'm going to choose this reporting to heading. That's what I called it in my original Excel spreadsheet. I don't need to worry about this one here because I've already got the name taken care of. So let me just choose next again. And this is where I decide what fields I want to display on the organization chart itself. So I want their name and maybe also their role. So again, this is picking up other headings from the original Excel spreadsheets. Let's add that next again. And this is where I can choose to have extra information in the shape data. So that's going to include the employee name and the role and also their ID. Well, I'm going to include the uh, reporting to field as well, just for completion. So I've got everything. So let's click next again. Oh, look, this is an interesting one. I can even import pictures. And in fact, I have included some pictures for you. So yes, if I just show you what it looks like, there we go. I've given you this in your supplemental files. But the idea is you've got pictures there where the name of the file will be matchable with the name in your data. And you'll also see back in that step of the wizard in the dialog box is giving me some guidance as to how those photos should be named. So let me just browse to that folder of photographs. There it is. Let's click next again. I've got a few options, which I think are going to be more useful if you've got a very large organization chart, but I'm happy for it to just automatically sort it out. And the name at the top of the page, well, it can work it out for itself. But if you want to go for a belt and braces approach, then you can tell it who is at the very top of the tree. So in my organization, let's imagine Susan Lee is the managing director. She doesn't report to anybody. And then we can click finish and let Visio work its magic. It might take a second or two, but wow, look at that. It's done it. So at the top of the tree there, we've got Susan Lee, the managing director. You can see that the pictures have already been filled in. Absolutely brilliant. Look up at the ribbon. We've now got an org chart ribbon tab available to help us change the look of this and change the layout. But we do talk a bit more about manipulating organization charts in a different skill. So for now, we'll just leave it at that because it's looking pretty good, I have to say. For our next example, we're going to create a flow chart from data. And in fact, if you go to the data ribbon tab, the very first button at the left hand side, there is a create from data button. And when you click that, it says, well, you know, what diagram do you want to create? It's giving us some flow chart options and it's then guiding us to pick up an Excel workbook. But I do strongly recommend that you actually use the built in Excel templates as a starting point to this. So I'm going to cancel out of this and show you where you can find those Excel templates. So if you go file new 
And up in my recent list, you can see this is the sort of thing we're looking for. It's the Excel leading to a certain flowchart type. But there are a couple of templates for you to have a look at. And to find them down here, if you just search for Excel, it'll then pop up with the ones that it's got an Excel template for. So it's these three here, a straightforward flowchart, a cross-functional flowchart, and an audit diagram. If I click one, it's going to guide me through the process of connecting to Excel to create that type of flowchart. But look, it's giving me a link to an Excel template that's already formatted and laid out in the way that Visio is going to understand. And that is going to make the process much more successful. So I do strongly recommend that you do at least take a look at these templates and probably use them as the basis for your data for your flowchart. So when I click that, it's going to start up for me this data visualizer. It's basically just an Excel spreadsheet with some tabs down the bottom here and lots of instructions. So we're going to create a cross functional flowchart. That's where we get those swim lanes with the different functions, you know, the different departments that are responsible for different steps of the process. And it's giving us some instructions on how to use this template. So fill in your data, import to Visio and bingo, you've got your diagram. And then this button here will just link you to the next tab where it's explaining what your data in Excel needs to look like. And it's giving you a preview here. And this is quite important because we need to make sure that Visio is going to understand the columns that we're using and the, uh, the shape types that we're using and how we're describing what connects to what and how the connectors are labeled. So do have a look at this as it explains the different headings and whatnot. But then even more useful, it gives you an example. It gives you a sort of a template for you to fill in. So these blue headings are the ones that Visio will be looking for to enable you to quickly create the diagram in Visio. And then these green ones will just be extra customizable shape data that you can, you know, you can do what you like with. Now, to save you watching me type all of this in, I do have one that's already filled in. So what I should just do is I shall open that up. And of course, I have given you this in your supplemental files so you can look at this too. But if we just let that open, so it's the same template, but I've already filled it in. And you'll notice that each step in the process has to have a unique ID. The step description is the text that you want to appear in the flowchart shape. And then the next step ID is pretty critical because a flowchart has a series of steps. You know, it needs to know well, what is the next step. So the first step is the start. The next step is the P200 step, which is this row here. You'll also see the shape type and built into the template, there's already a drop down list there of the different shape types. So that makes it easy for you. The function will be the swim lanes. So that's the horizontal bands in the resulting flowchart. And the phase will give us some vertical bands. And then this is some optional shape data that I have added with the green headings. And one more thing to note, where you've got multiple things in a field, notice that they are separated by commas. So this here is a decision, you know, has the whatever it is passed its review, yes or no. So it's leading to two different outcomes which are those two bits of the process there. And therefore, I've also got labels for the connectors. Again, separated with the comma, the yes leads us to that first ID and the no leads us to that second ID. So have a play with this, filling in the different steps and whatnot. And once you've done that, make sure it's saved. And then in Visio, go back to here and let's create our flowchart using that Excel data that we've already filled in. So I'm going to click create. It pops up with a very similar wizard to the one we saw before from the uh, data ribbon tab. You'll notice that I, of course, have to go and pick up that Excel file. And you'll see there's another link there to the Excel template if we hadn't already spotted that. But let me go and browse to that in the supplemental file. So it's just the same spreadsheet that we've just been looking at, which is that one there. Because I'm using the template, it's already got a suitable range that's labeled. So it knows what it's looking for. That's exactly what I wanted it to pick up. Let's click next again. And this is quite nice. And again, because I use the template, it's already all mapped. You know, it knows exactly what matches up with what. But you'll see here that the swim lanes, those horizontal bands, it's matching up with the function column in the spreadsheet. But if it hadn't got that right, you would just drag it into there. So these are the columns from the Excel spreadsheet that you drag into place to indicate the, the swim lanes and the phases. Let me just click next again. And it's similar for these, you know, what is the field in the Excel spreadsheet that's indicating the actual text that I want to appear in the box? Well, it's the process step description. It knows that because I use a template, but if it had got it wrong, I just drag it from the uh, available columns on the left hand side there. This is where I would identify exactly what shapes I want to use. So again, I could drag these different shapes on if it hadn't got it right. Next again. This is where we're telling it how it knows what the next step is. You know, what are the relationships between these tasks and what's the delimiter that we're using? So you already saw in ours that we had a comma, didn't we, to separate out, for example, when there was a decision, when there was a yes or no decision, we had it separated with a comma. So that's all looking good because we use the template. So let me click finish. And again, there's a bit of magic that's going to happen. 
look at that. So these three swim lanes here are the functions. You can see them labeled there with how we had it written in the Excel spreadsheet. The phases are the vertical bits, so the planning phase and the development and the review phase. And you can, of course, meddle with the formatting of this. So it annoys me slightly that those headings weren't uh, properly centered. So let me just center those. And if I click on these shapes, of course, the shape data is already populated, including any of those extra fields that I had filled in, such as the uh, owner there and the whether it was complete or not. You'll also notice that there's a data graphic field window that's automatically popped up. So let's have a go at this. So let's say I think, oh, yes, it'd be quite nice to have some sort of data graphic to indicate whether a step is complete or not. That was one of my custom fields. So let me check that box. And then if I go to the data ribbon tab and maybe choose, oh, um, let's have the thumbs up and thumbs down and let's change the position of that graphic so it's above the shape. But then I think, oh, hang on a minute. Hmm, it looks like those first few steps are not complete because they've got a thumbs down and these last ones with the thumbs up are complete. But if I just go back to the original data, it was the other way around. The first few steps are done, but we know how to work with our data graphics. So if you go to this button here and right click to edit that, that's where we can say, ah, no, complete equals yes for the thumbs up and no for the thumbs down. So let me just click OK to that and OK again. Good. That's now the, the right way around. So yes, you can generate diagrams from an Excel spreadsheet. And if you've already got suitable data in Excel or you just prefer to use Excel, then this really can speed up your diagram creation process. And that concludes your introduction to working with data in Microsoft Visio. Of course, there is a lot more to explore on this topic. But for now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.